Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. We're starting a new season of The Leftovers today. We've completed seasons one and two and we're down to the final season, season three, which I'm both excited and very sad about. This has been so amazing. This whole like journey to this point has been up, down, around. I've been happy, I've been sad, I've been very, very angry and I've been very, very sad. <laughs> No, really, it's been, it's been real. I was thinking more about the end of season two after I'd stopped filming because I was just so dumbstruck by the end of it. It felt like we'd been through so much. Almost, I almost couldn't break it down or break down the season. So it's been nice to have a little bit of time to let it all settle and just appreciate all over again what an absolute masterpiece that season of television was from you know the cave woman you know beginning right through you know to the bitter end and and that weird realization or at least question you know, did garvey get his wish answered i think i may be a fraud but if I'm not, I can give you anything you want. Show me back. Grant. Everyone's there. Everyone is all under the same roof. But we don't know what's going on with that. We don't know if John went back into his house and his whole family was there or if his whole family has fallen apart. There, was, there were a whole bunch of questions answered in season two and a whole new bunch of questions asked. So I left that season feeling like I'd been, feeling like I'd been in a shipwreck. Like I'd been having this amazing journey on my ship and then there was a massive shipwreck and then I actually thought I was going to die and then I didn't. But I was knackered and traumatised. I came in like a wrecking ball Yeah, I just closed my eyes as well Left me crashing in a blazing fall All you ever did was That's about how season two felt. It was magnificent. It was absolutely magnificent. There are very few shows on television that have the power to make you feel like you've experienced something real. And this show is one of those few shows, you know, when it makes you cry, it doesn't just give you a little cry. It makes you feel a little bit sad all day. It's absolutely phenomenal and I'm like I'm still laughing at jokes from the first season like even now I, I live with my daughter so I... oh fuck your daughter <laughs> it's it's really good now we're gonna watch season three episode one the book of Kevin I guess it's gonna be about Kevin I've got no idea where this season is going to lead us i hope it leads us to david burton it seems like a bit of a big wish to ask for them to go to australia but it would be nice if we could figure out what this australia david burton element was it feels like the natural next step for the show i don't want to wait any longer let's have at it Pilgrims? Even God's son. Only the father knows. They look like homesteaders. The world will be at ease. Banquets and... She's getting shunned. God, what a horrible life. You go up on the roof and bloody stand in the rain, you sexist twat.
We picked up! Yay! I'm still pissed at all of you, especially you, Meg. You are unreasonable with your mother. Hmm? Is that a just a matter of time before one of those fuckers bites your face off. Is it at fact time? Kevin's looking a bit uh, weathered. It's completely different. What's going on? It looks like he's looking bizarre in the hot or something. He's not, I don't care who it is, all right? There's a height ordinance. Nothing above 15 feet. You got to take it down. You know the pillars are 15 feet, oh, man. Oh, hang on. The guy on the pillar is grandfathered in. Hey, Chief, hold on. Uh, these gentlemen don't seem to want to deflate their little joke here. Uh, no, no, it is not a joke, okay? Mr. Gary Busey's coming back from heaven on the 14th. How he's going to know where to land? <laughs> All right. Listen, we'll already go over our number. A few bodies short down at the bridge. You mind running down there till roll call? No, not at all. all right. And we got dinner tonight, 6 o'clock sharp, don't forget. 5.30 works a little better for me. Well, 6 o'clock works better for me. Oh, okay, 6 it is. You guys do remember it's my birthday today, right? Get to the okay. bridge. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> the king of Babylon ah. had a dream. You are answers Dan. And you getting cut down isn't the worst part. Once you are down, you will lose your mind. You will go mad. Seven years, you must cancel all debts. Genesis, seven years of famine began. Ezekiel, they shall burn them with fire for seven years. So, what will happen on October 14th, just a couple of weeks from now? Probably nothing. But... If something were to happen, it would happen here, in Jordan, Texas, in Miracle, when my wife awoke from a three-year coma the day I brought her here, Mary. Oh, Mary the same feeling I had after being told by countless doctors that Mary could not bear a child. But she bore one here. My friends, I've got that feeling again. So if something does happen on October 14th, You've all come to the right place. <laughs> Hallelujah. You watching porn? What? Oh, when people are watching porn, they shut. Okay. That's so flat. Coming tonight? Told Tommy six o'clock sharp. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the church. I know we're over capacity. It's just so many people want to come. Yeah, well, then, look, maybe you should um, stop advertising. <laughs> What's that? The address for the church is right on. No one loves handing out flyers more than you do. I swear I didn't do this. No, I heard what you said in there. You said nothing's going to happen on the 14th unless everything happens on the 14th. <laughs> I can't afford to have this place explode again, all right? Tone it down. Of course, you're right. We'll do. <laughs> we'll do? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Did he see it? What? We are looking now at an influx of anywhere from five to ten thousand people between then and now. Oh, 
Am I late? No, you're right on time. Um, Agent Nora Durst from the DSD is... Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. So, I know we went over this a couple of months ago, but there's been some confusion. If a suspect says departure, you get me. Cool? Dismissed, assholes. Fuck that, Agent Durst. Did you pay Agent him, you? Durst? The guy just came in and says he needs to talk to you. Is he a tinfoil hat or a Kenneth? Neither. Those are from New York. Says you guys were hunting buddies. Dean. Well, shit. I should hold back on some of the details until I can provide you with unassailable proof. But yeah, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, it's, it's a little what? out there. Yeah. Oh, shit. I tried to keep you out of this, but I got to regretfully inform you that our prey, previously unsophisticated and easily killable, <laughs> has adapted. What the hell is in the... What is... What? A sandwich? With a bite taken out of it? So Wyoming Senator Y. Woodrow Huffman, the incumbent, mind you, has a swanky fundraiser week back. Food's high class. Right? Crab cakes. Corners game hands, but this motherfucker Huffman, he asks me for a peanut butter sandwich. He asked you for? Yeah, I was undercover on the catering staff. But the senator was a guest of honor. Man of the hour, so fucking ain't right. We got him his sandwich. Peanut butter. You die. Man, they love that shit. He's the only one to touch it. Only one to get it. His saliva. When you test it, you, you know that it's uncorrupted. Test it for what? Canine DNA. Excuse me? Now, I, know, I know what you're thinking. All right? Why take on human form? What do they want? Pardon me? All right, today it's a senator, tomorrow it's the secretary of you know, goddamn agriculture, and then it's the president, the leader of the free fucking world. And that, my friend, is how the world ends. Two weeks from now, that's how they get their finger on the button. Paw. Sorry. That's how they get their paw on the button. <laughs> you, you don't believe me. No. No, Dean, we don't. So, what do you want to know? Why's Jump the Look, no offense, all right, but uh, my wife made me come here. All right, I don't really believe in any of this shit. Well, you already paid, so you might as well hear what I got, man. He believed his he, family. He failed oh. his family. He failed his family. He failed at his job. He failed at being the man that he wanted to be. Oh, my God. We got a problem. We got to keep it between you and me. Okay. Apparently, dogs are taking on human form, and they are infiltrating the highest levels of our government. <laughs> She's good, isn't she? She's the best. This the house where all the fucked up people live? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wishes do come true. 
Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, where's Erica then? On my 25th birthday, I was uh, I was driving through an intersection, and bam, back of my cruiser gets clipped. I jump out of the car, and uh, you know, airbags have gone off. The woman who hit me, she's shaking, but she's okay. And I go over to her car. It's a little two-year-old boy in a car seat. And he's just calm as can be. He's just smiling at me. Must have liked the uniform. Wait, that was Lori? Yeah. A year later, I married her. I adopted Smiley over here. Oh. All because we both <laughs> thought we had the green light. And it turned out that the switcher was busted. So, you know. Yeah. Divine intervention. <laughs> What do you mean? You know, like uh, karma, kismet, whatever. Mm -hmm. That was weird. So this is the last time we're ever going to see each other, huh? What do you, what do you mean? Just the world is ending. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> How's Nora? She's great. Did you ever talk about Lily? No. What happened to Lily then? It's more romantic than when we met in divorce court and you told me fuck my daughter. That's not where we met. We met at the Christmas dance and you told me you cheated on your wife. <laughs> we gotta work on our story. Mm. Yeah. Love you. I love you too.